New day, new laptop to repair, and this time we have an Alienware X15R1. This would be like a 2022 model. The customer brought this laptop in because when they were using it at the library, the battery went dead, and then when they plugged in the charger, they heard a large pop. I can only imagine the looks he got from that loud noise, but later on when they got home, they opened up the bottom of the laptop, and they saw like a big burnt section on the board. So I haven't looked at this yet. Let's take a look together to see if we can get this figured out. All right, it's not doing anything when we try to turn it on. Let's plug it in and see if it pulls any current and it shorts out the charger right when we plug it in. So that means that there's like a dead short on the board, probably, you know, on the main power rail. So let's open up the bottom and take a look inside. All right, and the bottom is off. Let's take a quick look around. Here's the main battery, it's an OEM. We got four fans on this system. That's why I love this design. These two fans right here actually blow across and cool these heat sinks there. And then these are the main GPU and CPU heat sinks. We have one NVMe uh, SSD there and uh, that's about it. So everything else is kind of built on the motherboard. The GPU, the CPU, the RAM is all built on there. There's a wireless card. I don't see anything, but if they said they had something burnt, we might be able to smell it, but I don't smell anything either. Let me get this back cover off and we can look there. Ah ha ha ha, it reveals itself right here. Let's look at it under the microscope. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, so we definitely have an issue here. And this looks like even melted solder. We may have problems inside the board layer. So we have a dead short on the board. The AC adapter went into protection mode. So whenever the charger gets put into protection mode like that, it's detecting a direct short. So the motherboard's either telling the AC adapter to shut off or there's a dead short right here. And I'm suspecting one of these capacitors are shorted out completely. But, you know, we don't know if it's just a shorted capacitor. That would be nice. But we see a lot of residue here. So whatever component was here actually uh, sprayed a lot of residue. But what we don't want is the board layers to be ruined. And I can see that we have board layers kind of lifting here. So we're going to have to try to clean this up so we can take a look before we start removing anything. Yeah, this is a, a big pad right here. I don't know if it's going to be positive or negative or ground. So we're going to have to clean that up, clean that up. And this is a big solder ball. But let's measure... I imagine that these capacitors are going to be shorted. So we're in continuity mode with a probe uh, beep. And that's interesting. We don't have a short here. Wow. Or do we? Okay, we don't have a short here. How is that possible? Let me try this way. Okay, we do. It's a 36 ohm short, though. That's not 10 ohm, 9 ohm. I mean, that's still pretty high. If we test over here, what do we get? 0.2. So there's a dead short on this side. This side's not a dead short, and this is the side that looks crazy. Let's clean this up so we can take a look. I mean, the worst case scenario is going to be the board layers are going to be laminated together, and that is pretty much not repairable. I mean, we could peel back some stuff and try to make something kind of work, but I mean, I put a year warranty on all my repairs, so it's kind of hard to guarantee that it's going to keep working. Let me get a toothbrush and some alcohol, and we'll clean this up. All right, hold on. Before I do anything, let's unplug the battery. Battery's unplugged. I mean, everything's going to be shut off anyway, because all the protection MOSFETs are going to be engaged there, so it's not going to be letting any current flow anyway. But here, we'll remeasure this, because you can't really measure resistance whenever there is a battery plugged in. So we're still getting 0.2 over here on this side, and on this side we're getting... Here, let me flip these probes doesn't like to measure backwards on here. So that one we're getting 0.2. But this one, you know, these might be floating or not attached to something. That one's getting 11. Yeah, it may be that these aren't attached very well. All right, let's get this revealed. Ready? Okay, there's a few components here. So if we're even comparing to this area over here, we have a resistor. So that's gonna be this one. Looks like there's a burn hole in it, so that one's gonna be replaced. It looked like we used to have a capacitor across here, so right here. There was a capacitor across that. Three capacitors here, three capacitors there. I don't know what component was right here. I think it's supposed to be these two capacitors like that. So somehow, I mean, there's a big solder ball here, and then you can almost see there's a big hole there. Yeah, there's like a hole in the board. And whenever it gets like this, it's very, very hard to repair this because all this stuff's kind of welded together at this point. See, yeah, uh, the board layers, and there's a lot of board layers here. And if we have anything touching internally, then we're going to not be able to fix this. So, But I want to get all, the, is all this stuff off so we can rebuild this whole area, and we'll see what it looks like. I don't know if we're even going to be able to get this solder ball off of here without ripping these pads more. Yeah, I mean, this is just falling apart, just flaking. 
apart right here. Okay, we're able to break that off. Um, but this isn't looking good. This doesn't look promising. And again, you can you know you can run a board without those capacitors because they're just acting as filtering caps. But I mean, a resistor being damaged is not going to let it work. But we also have a short in this area, which leads me to believe. Oh, does that have a crack in it? I mean, one of these capacitors could be the, the cause in the first place. It might have just been cracked and then caused everything to kind of you know back up right there and then uh, burn up the board. But we don't know. So let's uh, continue cleaning and then we'll remove all these components and then see what the damage is. It's like one of our capacitors already fell off, which is perfect. And so let's get the rest of them off of here. All right, I'm gonna flood this whole area with flux as much as I can. I don't know how much of this stuff's gonna come off properly and what's not, but we're gonna see what we can do. We'll do 450 degrees C at 60% air. And we, we'll see what we can get off of here. Okay, that one came off. That one came off. This came off. That's off. Okay. And this is the solder ball that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get off. Because a lot of times this gets welded on here. That's a via right there that's all burned up. I'm gonna put some more flux on here. Okay, I'm gonna add some solder to some of this to try to get the rest of it off. But whenever it gets high heat like this, whenever it shorts out, it's like you can't even get this stuff off. See, it's like completely fused to it. It just becomes welded, essentially. So adding solder will sometimes help stuff flow, but if this is welded on here, then there's not much hope for it. Yeah, it's like all these areas do not want to come off at all. There we go. Break that off. And all this is very sensitive. So I'm not even scrubbing. I'm just kind of like trying to move around the hot solder to see if I can get it to uh, pick up any of those pieces. All right, let me see if I can get the rest of this stuff off of here. All right, let's try cleaning it up again. I don't know. This is not looking promising. So we can put three capacitors here. We can put three capacitors here. All right, so that's not the concern. The concern is gonna be, you know, so we're trying to match what we have on this side. So we have three capacitors and then three capacitors here. This is what we're trying to rebuild. This is gonna be the main issue. So a capacitor across here and a capacitor across here, it's gonna be a little more difficult, but it's still doable. This one right here, um, we might still have something there. Yeah, we still have that. And then this resistor, this resistor is probably crucial um, to having this even work. And then this via right here, this capacitor right here across this via, this goes to the other side of the board somewhere. Or, I don't know, does it tie to something right here? I don't know. Uh, this goes to the other board layer. This goes through the board probably right here. Just gonna take that off. I don't know, there's so many board layers right here. This is another via right next to it. Yeah. I can't get this ball off. I'm just gonna have to cut it off and we'll try to rebuild. But you see what we're looking at right here? This is this is what we need to really pay attention to. So we have this board layer here, and we have this board layer here, and this one right here. You see how this one goes underneath this? There's supposed to be a separator there. And I think the separator's gone. I'm gonna break this out of the way. You see how it's just, there's supposed to be this thin stuff underneath here? That's all burned up. So this just is able to touch this other part. 
So I bet if I plug in the power, we'll start getting like come some arcing in this area. There's really no way to rebuild this without like tearing all this out and then trying to just build layers across. It definitely just, this is probably a lost cause. This would take a lot more time and it probably won't even work in the end. I'm gonna cut this ball off real quick. See how that's, this layer goes underneath the other layer? This one's down even below this one, I think, or maybe this is the same one. All right, so that's a little easier to see, possibly. So we gotta keep that separate from the other one that's going underneath here. And then this one has to be separate from this one that's underneath here, and then these vias have to go through the other side of the board. And how are we supposed to reattach something across here, attach this via to this other thing, do this, and then have a chip go across here? I mean, we can, yeah, we could put capacitors here, and we could put capacitors here. That's all we can do. And then this resistor we can probably put back on to there. But the rest of this stuff I don't see working, and I bet right now if I plug in the board, we're going to get some arcing. So let's, let's take a look and see what kind of arcing we're going to get there. I'm going to dry off this alcohol so it doesn't light on fire. Okay. All right, so we have no components on there yet. So we haven't tried to rebuild anything yet. All we've done is clean it. So what we're trying to figure out is if these board layers are all shorted out together. We can actually measure across some of these real quick. Let's see if this is still shorted. We still are showing a short, which means it's probably get, gonna be in this area. Let's plug in the power real quick and see what it does. And it just turned off the, the charger again. So we're kind of out of luck on this. You know, even if you said, okay, hey, there's another shorted component somewhere else on the board, that area right there is most likely the culprit. There's really nothing you can do because there's many board layers in this and they're stacked together and there's a little bit of separator between each layer. And if that got all burned up and then they're basically fused together, there's nothing we can do. Even if I tear at that whole section and separate everything and make it where the short is gone, we're not gonna be able to rebuild that area. So unfortunately, this is gonna be a motherboard replacement. There's nothing really I can do. Um, I'll call the customer and let them know. And I'd love to know your thoughts on this one. And thanks for watching. I couldn't save this laptop.